prompter now. Still can't use that thumb, though. Still cannot use that thumb. It's, it's a real, uh... It's a real pain. Also, guys, if you think Bird should provide me with beer for every show, put a bunch of smiles in there or hearts, let them know. <clears throat> Frank the Tank, Carnival's cruise director, joins us today. Shally covers expert packing tips for your cruise and how to fit 58 pairs of shoes and three cases of makeup into a carry-on and still have space for that bottle of wine. Jess from the U.S. is here with some more behind-the-scenes guests and insights. We have our cruise news from the industry, our photo of the week, and we are talking about Bird's upcoming cruise on Oasis of the Seas. This is going to be a packed show. Get your questions ready and drink in hand because this is Cruise Week TV Live. Welcome to our Saturday show. I am Matt, your newbie cruiser with only two cruises under my belt. For those that are new, I welcome you and I hope that you find a lot of information here. Don't be afraid to post questions in the comments as our producers are watching for those and will feed them to me to answer or to get our guests to answer them here live. Our show aims to help the newbie cruisers learn and get the most out of their cruise. We bring on the experts of cruising to help teach and help you save time and money and also pick the best ship and options for you. Tonight, our guest is veteran cruiser, cruise director for Carnival Cruise Line, Frank the Tank. He is here with us to answer your questions and tell you how to get the most out of your cruise. So if you have questions, please start to post them in the comments and we will get Frankie to answer them. My co-host Shally will be giving you packing tips and techniques later on, but first I want to tell you how to get a $500 worth of onboard credit on Carnival's newest cruise ship, the Carnival Horizon. Also, how to be on the same sailing as myself, Bird, Joe, and the rest of the Cruise Week TV team in 2019. We are going on the brand new Carnival Horizon for our first ever Cruise Week live group cruise. The date is February 23rd of 2019, and if you book through Good Memories Travel before the end of July, you only need to put a down the deposit. You will be entered into the Cruise Week drawing to win a $500 credit. Not only that, but you get to come with myself, Matt, and Bird on our live streaming cruise. We are visiting Grand Turk, San Juan, St. Kitts, and St. Martin, so call Good Memories Travel to book and enter the $500 cash drawing. But whatever your cruise you're planning to be on, if you want to save money, give them a call. You get the same great rates as booking yourself, plus you may get onboard credit or a customer reward. Yes, they actually give you money to go cruise with. They enjoy planning and helping with weddings and honeymoons. They are fully licensed by the CLIA, which stands for Cruise Lines International Association, and they have been earmarked by Disney. Good Memories Travel also specializes in handling every aspect of your group cruise, family getaway, or that family reunion you've been wanting to plan. Imagine letting someone else do all the work while you relax. Good Memories Travel also plans various Christian-related group cruises. Their God is Good group cruise is coming up, so be sure to check that out on their website. They handle, of course, cruises for all cruise lines like Carnival, Royal, MSC, Norwegian, and more all over the world. Debbie Smith is part of the cruise planner, so give her a call to see what they can do for you. It doesn't cost you a thing to look them up and get your best rate. Call Debbie for a free, no-obligation quote on your next cruise. What have you got to lose? Debbie can be reached at 321-338-2953 and, of course, their website at goodmemoriestravel.com. And let them know you heard about them on Cruise Week TV. The cruise directors on Carnival Cruise Ships are everywhere. They host a lot of shows. They do the announcements through the ship. They are often the first voice you hear in the morning as you're trying to sleep in. It's a very busy job, and as one cruise ends, the next one is just starting just hours later. So they start the process all over again. Tonight, we get to talk to Frankie, who has just completed five months on the Carnival Valor. So Frankie, welcome to the show, and just what is involved in being a cruise director? What's going on? Uh, as cruise director, um, first of all, it's great to be on the show, um, get to see all the episodes. Um, on vacation right now, I'm actually not on a ship right now, I'm home uh, on vacation spending time with the friends and family and stuff. But uh, being a cruise director, is, is, uh, it's, it's awesome. It's, we're, we're in charge of everyone's vacation, making sure everyone's having a great time, um, making sure people are having fun, staying out of trouble, and uh, just 
we get people involved. We get everyone uh, mixed in uh, to, to all the different groups and all the different activities and events. We lead the entertainment with the Fun Squad team, and it's just, uh, it's just, it's a blast. It's such a great thing. It's just, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else right now. So I'm gonna go back, kind of, let's say, like high school area. I'm assuming, did you have like uh, part-time jobs in like high school or college or something like that? Uh, no, my family actually own. We own a restaurant. We've been in business for 40 years, um, and I worked in the restaurant all growing up. Um, had nothing to do with entertainment or anything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I just I, I worked in the restaurant growing up, and then like all my friends and, and and my dad, we my mom, my parents, everybody just we we pretty much ran the restaurant all through high school, and uh, yeah, and then it was off to college after that. So how would you compare, let's say, working like a regular typical type of job, like restaurant job? I feel like that's very common for people to understand a little about it versus being a cruise director, which is such a small niche. How would you kind of compare them? Like, what do you like about each of them? Well, being, being a cruise director, it's it's it, not just necessarily specifically a cruise director, but uh, working on ships is, is more than just a job. It's, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's just you have to remember, like, when you're on a ship for that five months or six months, however long your contract is, um, you don't get to just hop in your car and go wherever you want whenever you want to do it. You're limited to obviously just the the ship when you're at sea and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's great to obviously if you're working a job at home, you, you want to be able to uh, go home and stuff. And that that's the one thing that you have to remember if you're gonna, especially I, I recommend it if any anyone just out of college or anyone uh, anyone young enough or if it has no strings attached at home that can is able to do a cruise ship, even if you do it for a year, just to kind of gain the experience and the uh, and it's it's it's, it's awesome. Um, yeah, you just have to remember those things. You can't go home at night. Again, you're you're kind of you go to your cabin instead of going at home. Um, you don't have those free uh, those free things to do. Like I said, it's more of a lifestyle change than it than a job with the job included in with it. Hmm, that sounds uh, pretty interesting. I thought about wanting to join a cruise ship in the past. I'm like, I, I don't know if I could really do it. Kind of just like waking up, going to work, and coming back. How how do you really do it? Like what what it's like a tough day for you, and what's like a really good day for you as a cruise director? Well, uh, for for me, port days obviously are, are best for for any crew members because we get uh, as long as you're not working, you get some time out to go check out the ports. Um, you get the the uh, depending on if if you're working or not. So uh, sea days obviously are always busy, just because we have uh, all the activities going on, all the entertainment, all the guests are on board the ship. So we obviously have uh, all the activities going on. So sea days are are a bit uh, crazy and wild, but they get, they go by very quick. Um, but the port days are, are always best for crew members because crew members get to get some time off and get to go uh, explore and enjoy the, the ports. Nice. So on those days, you normally get to sleep in or do you still have to wake up to the announcements <laughs> and everything else? There's no sleeping in. Come on. That, uh, yeah, yeah. As cruise director, you know, being the voice and the, and the face of the ship, again, we, we make all the announcements when we're pulling mm -hmm. into ports. Uh, again, we make the clearance announcements, let everybody know where the gangways are, when they're set and ready to go, what time they have to be back on board, all that information that they're going to need to know to make sure they maximize their time in, in, the, in the ports. Um, and then on the sea days, obviously, we have to keep everyone informed on what's going on and uh, keeping them, keep, them, keep, keep the flow going. There's just, mm -hmm. especially on a sea day, again, you've cruised it before, you know how crazy and, and uh, how busy that the sea days are. So we want to make sure everyone's maximizing their times and then their experience on board. Okay, we're just going to get this one out of the way. Is that uh -oh. a Diva shirt? Just, oh, okay. I, I I knew Shally was going to be on the show today, and I I have been lucky enough to <laughs> don't 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 put your head down in shame. Come on, you I know you can see the glitter going on there, but yes, I, the Divas got me a shirt. Look at this. It says Man Diva Cruise Director. I was lucky enough to have. Uh, oh, there she is. Hello, darling. Um. So yeah. So I was lucky yes. enough to have uh to to sail with the Divas twice, and I knew Shally was going to be on the show today. So I had to represent. I had to represent my uh my Divas. So uh. What's up, Shally? How are you? You are our diva king. Mwah, I try. I try. See, I'm a, I'm a man diva. I'm a man diva. What can I say? See? He's Sparkles and everything. I'm... <laughs> anyway, moving on with the uh, rest of our questions. Mario asks, um, is there any idea of what ship you'll be on after you come back in January? Uh, don't know yet. As of right now, my schedule is set. Uh, I, I'm on, like I said, I'm on vacation right now um, mm -hmm. until August 12th when I go back to the Valor out of Galveston, Texas, um, which uh, the crowds in Galveston are phenomenal, by the way. If anyone's watching from Galveston, come see me again. I absolutely love the Galveston crowds. Um, but uh, after that, I'll be there till January, February-ish. I don't really have a sign-off date yet, but after that, it's still up in the air. But um, uh, I, I'm always keeping updates on my Facebook page, so I'll mm -hmm. always, every, as soon as I find out, I'll, I'll throw it on there. Nice. When you're on a ship, you know, you're usually on there for quite a while. What do you miss most about land that you can't really find on a cruise ship? Um, I think I think it's just the, the holidays and, and birthdays and just being away for, for such a long time. Uh, I'm really close with my family, so 
I've got two little nieces that are two and four and they're growing up and I don't want to miss them growing up. And the mm -hmm. great thing is these days, obviously with technology, with like FaceTime and Skype, I'm able to Skype with them every time I get to a port. So uh, as soon as I come back home, they know exactly who I am. It's not kind of like mm -hmm. that. Who is this guy that we maybe kind of know? So um, just missing the holidays and birthdays and, and all that kind of stuff, just being away from family and stuff. So with being on the ship, this is a question that I thought about that I didn't really think about maybe too much for uh, you as my guest, <laughs> but um, do most crew members get their haircuts on their ship or do they get them on the land? Is that, is that, a, is that a joke? I mean, is that, is that, a, is that a joke? I, <laughs> no, most crew members do get their hair cut on board the ship. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I actually do my own hair. I, I've learned how to do it myself, good. and I can I, I can even get the spots on the back that I'm, I'm good You're at. Good. But, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, most crew members do get their hair cut on board the ship. Yeah, the, 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 every you know, all those ships have the spas, and uh, the spa team upstairs are so awesome. They're they're really great. Do they do it for free for crew, or do they still charge, or how does that usually work with like I don't know, like amenity wise? Yeah, yeah, no, we, we get discounts. We get crew discounts um, for working on the ship, obviously, in the shops and the bars and upstairs in the spa. Um, you know, as cruise, as, as a Mandiva cruise director, you know, I, I'm entitled for a, it, it, you know, you, you kind of have to show off what the spa can do, but, you know, there's not really much to do with this. But, um, but yeah, so we get discounts upstairs in the spa, just like uh, around the ship. That's pretty interesting. So what what other like amenities do you guys get discounts for i know you guys have your own crew bar downstairs but what other perks do you get as a crew member on the ship uh if we want to go shopping in the gift shops uh if we go to any of the bars uh, around the ship we get discounts at the at the bars and drinks as well um yeah we get to eat uh, we get to eat in the crew areas sometimes if we want to go upstairs to lido or if we want to go mm -hmm. up to guys burgers um like on valor we just got sushi at sea which is great so sushi is available now on the valor um, which mm -hmm. is super exciting. Um, so we have the we were able to to go. Obviously, guests come first in every in every scenario mm -hmm. in every situation. But um, if if it's too busy with guests, then we just come back a little bit later and and uh, get stuff then. So with um, all the different jobs on the ship and everything else, I, I'm assuming you have worked other jobs besides just being a cruise director, correct? Yeah, I've always been on entertainment uh, and entertainment on ships. Um, I started um, back in 2002, so I've actually been on cruise ships this August. It'll be 15 years uh, that oh, I've been wow. on cruise ships. So um, I started as a host, as a crew staff, just uh, running activities, and I worked my mm -hmm. way up to assistant cruise director, uh, and then up to cruise director now. So yeah. So if you could, I always like asking cruise directors this because it seems like cruise directors are the face of the ship, and everyone kind of knows them and who they are, and they always have like their signature presence around board. If you yeah. could trade jobs with anyone else on the ship, who would you want to trade Ooh. with, and why? That's a good one. I, I I think I'd have to trade with the captain. The captain, I think, has got a really cool job. Like I. I always find it very when I when I was younger I always wanted to be an airline pilot an airplane pilot when I was little so I think it's it being a being captain of a cruise ship would kind of be like the same thing um, you just get to drive that huge ship I and mean, a lot of people don't realize how big those things actually are so to be able mm -hmm. to maneuver those um, and when you bring them into port and stuff it's really neat because I, I, it's it's amazing how they can just literally bring those things alongside and um, I think I think it would be the captain obviously he's got a huge room too wouldn't mind having that room mm -hmm. for a week and that paycheck would be good as well we're not going to complain with that. <laughs> Plus the captain's table sounds quite uh quite nice again. Yeah, of course. I bet they get quite an elegant spread, I would imagine. So uh Jeanette Essie on Facebook asks, do you get to change an activity or game on board the ship, or do you normally have to go through corporate to be able to do that? I actually know Jeanette. I know her very well. Um hello Jeanette, by the way. Um we have the we have the freedom to to, to change some of the uh, activities on, on board the ship. If it's something really big where it's gonna affect other areas of the ship where it comes to dining or the shows or anything, we just run it by the office uh, just to make sure they're okay with it. And as long as they're okay with it, then it's a go. Thumbs up. Nice. So with I've seen so many different activities and everything else. How many of those are kind of cookie cutter on ship to ship with Carnival at least? Um, you know, people ask us a lot, you know, we, we do, we have the same general program week after week mm -hmm. and cruise after cruise on the Valor. We do the five and four day cruises. So it's a five, five, four. So at the end of three cruises, it's two weeks. Um, mm -hmm. we have the same, uh, general event, uh, plan that we do for the whole cruise. Um, but honestly, like as most people, as a lot of people think that it's, oh, it's the same thing over and over and over. It's always different because you never know what the reactions of the crowd yeah. you're going to get. Um, it, there's a lot of ad libbing and there's a lot of, uh, just, Trying to be good, like on the spot. If you could be good on the spot, then uh, then again, the, the the shows, the activities, the events, they're all they all go around a lot smoother. And it, it and I, it, for me, and I always challenge my teams as well. Is you know, some most of us, some of us have our, our things that we go to, our, our things during certain activities. You have certain jokes or certain things you go to. But I always challenge my team to try something mm -hmm. new, try something different. 
again, change it up just a little bit so it doesn't get stale for, you know, if you do the same thing every other day for five, six months, it's just going to kind of get old for us. So to keep it oh, fresh yeah. for us and to keep it fresh for the guests that keep coming cruising, um, I always challenge my guys to, to make sure that they're uh, trying new stuff and, uh, and just trying new things out. Kind of uh, spitballing off that, uh, Andy Tavares asks, what's the best game or activity that is a must do on the ship? Everything. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> Everything that we do is, is so much fun. But um, if you're going on a cruise, if you're going on a cruise and uh, things not to miss out on, I, I would say um, my favorite thing is one of one of my favorite things is the love and marriage show. Um, you know, we pick three couples to come up on the stage and find out how much they know about each other. And we give up prizes to the couples. They get the mm -hmm. most amount of points. Um, the mega deck party is always a huge party. That's again, that's that's fun for all ages. It's it's, it's kind of like the nightclub that's out there upstairs. We do dances. We give uh, throw away some, you know, glow necklaces and beads, and have some fun to really get the party atmosphere. Um, I host the '70s and '80s uh, music trivia and dance parties, which get huge. I post pictures and videos on my Facebook all the time about them uh, because I feel like it just it, the energy is just so great. So, mm -hmm. um, love and marriage for me is one of my favorite things to host. I absolutely love love and marriage. I really enjoy a lot of the shows. I always try to go to the uh, adult scavenger hunt. That's my personal favorite. I the try quest. to do them every time. Yep. Yep, kind of a quest. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good time. I always try to bring like, <laughs> random stuff with me. You never know what you're going to need. It's it's very adult, so it's, that one's definitely not for the kids. And if you're easily offended, don't go to the quest. Just don't go. That's yeah. that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Rob YZF on YouTube asks, have you ever been injured during a performance by your own doing or by a guest? I've never been injured. Knock on or some wood. I've uh, never been <laughs> never been injured at work where I've had to had time off. Obviously, little bumps and bruises, but nothing where I've had, I had to uh, lose time of work or, or be off work at all. There was one time I was I was I was sick. Um, I was confined um, again. Uh, this was a few years back um, for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day for the norovirus that the ship had gotten mm -hmm. that I was on, and it was wasn't wasn't fun. But um, but that besides that, no injuries. I haven't had any injuries or anything at all like that. How do the activities change during holiday cruises? Um, they're, they're very holiday specific. So depending on mm -hmm. what, uh, what holiday it is, um, we always have little scavenger hunts that kind of take place and they're always geared towards that holiday. We'll do like little duck hunts and the ducks will be, um, they'll be themed to whatever holiday it is. So that's really fun. It takes place throughout the whole entire day. We hide mm -hmm. little ducks around the ship and now uh, people go look for them. We have different themed trivias, activities. Uh, like I said, again, depending on, on what event or what holiday it is, again, we have a, uh, our team in the office are phenomenal at uh, making sure that we have stocked of everything that we're going to need for all the holidays and events. Um, so uh, again, kudos to our team in, uh, in Miami. Uh, they, they do an awesome job at making sure that we're set up uh, for success. And then we're just, we just throw it in operation and we just have fun with the guests. So kind of transition to a slightly different topic off of activities. So there's been a recent change where you get rid of your uh, assistant cruise director, correct? Correct, or yeah. We, um, Carnival Cruise Line doesn't have any. Uh, we've, we've gone fleet-wide now. There are no more assistant cruise directors. Um, we have cruise directors now and entertainment directors. The entertainment director is now the division head. They, uh, they lead the division. Um, they're in charge of the entire entertainment program. Uh, uh, myself and the fun squad, uh, the entertainment hosts, uh, we go out there and run the activities that are planned for the cruise. What do you like better? I know your answers have to be kind of a bit uh, cushioned a bit, but with the entertainment director versus the uh, cruise director assistant, what are some like the pros and cons of having both of them? Or uh, the, the for for me, I, I personally I think the operation works ten times better having an entertainment director and a cruise mm -hmm. director. Um, the only reason I say that is because as cruise director and assistant cruise director, the cruise director was the division head, so which means you had to go to all the meetings, you had to go to the inspections, you had to answer all the emails and mm -hmm. do all that stuff and be out with the guests. Um, uh, and trying to balance that was it was was was, uh, it was tough. It was it made the days even longer. It made them even harder. But now that we have the entertainment director, um, they get to do all the they you know they're they're the full back of house positions. So they do the inspections, they do the meetings, mm -hmm. they do all that kind of stuff. Where we as cruise directors now, we're still working the same amount of hours, but our hours are now focused more with the guests than running the, the full operation. So the entertainment director um, deals with all the admin stuff, back of house, uh, and running the entertainment program. Um, where me as cruise director and the rest of the cruise directors in the fleet, we actually just get to be out there with the guests a lot more, which is great. And, and it shows. It shows a little way within, um, within all the guests. You can, you can just tell there's been a change since we've changed over to um, cruise, direct, uh, cruise director and entertainment director. Um, the, the vibes around the ship, you can just tell, are great because the cruise directors are able to be on the floor a lot more. So kind of going back a bit further, uh, Andy Tavares asks, how many hours do you normally work a week as a cruise director? 
Oh, so uh, during the week, again, we don't have any days off. So in that five mm. or six months that we're working, we don't get any days off. So it's a seven day a week job every single day. Um, no days off. Um, mm. In a week, I would say 75 to 80. Uh, I would say averaging 10, 11, 12 hours, depending. Uh, it, on, a, on a port day, it's a little less. You might get to like eight or nine. And on a C mm. day, it might get up to like 11 or 12. So I would say it averages around about 10 hours a day, um, give or take, uh, plus or minus a couple hours. How do you find time to relax? And if you do find that time, what do you normally do to relax? <laughs> yeah, relax time is good. And this is another another one of the things that I tell my team all the time. You know, we, on the Valor, we do, we our itinerary is the five five four, so we go to Casamela Progresso every five days. So you know, for for us, poor time is is our relaxed time and our off time. Some people choose to go out, go to the beach, go get lunch. Um, every couple times, I'll just stay on board. I'll watch movies. I'll relax. I'll catch up on rest. Um, I'm a big, huge movie buff, so I watch a lot of movies. Um, so I'll, I'll just stay on board. I'll literally make the announcements in the morning. I'll be at the gangway in the morning to have and uh, getting all the guests off the ship. Then I'll go back up and I'll lay down to bed for the whole afternoon until we start getting ready for the, uh, the afternoon uh, and evening events and stuff. Nice. Do you drink coffee, by the way? Because I've talked to a couple cruise directors that no, not at all. No, I don't drink coffee, no Red Bull, I don't, none of that stuff. I'm noticing I a I just, common trend with that, and it's... It, it, it does nothing for me. It, it honestly does nothing for me. I've tried it. I, I don't like the taste of Red Bull. It's just it's a personal mm. preference. Um, I'm not a big coffee drinker. Like I, I'll drink a latte every now and again just because, but I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm not that person who wakes up in the morning and is like, where's my coffee before I start my day? Mm. That's, that's totally not me. So <laughs> I feel like every cruise director I've interviewed have said, oh, I don't drink like coffee or anything with caffeine. I might have like a tea or a soda to kind of get me up a little bit. And that's just so mind boggling. I need like a pot of coffee or like espresso <laughs> or something to just like, okay, let's let's try to be alive today and vocal. No, I, I what what I always do is I always wake up like a good forty five minutes to an hour before I know I have to be somewhere just to give myself time to wake up. And I check my emails. I shower in the morning, wake myself up. That's my wake up. You know, I, I I'll th throw some music on as I'm getting ready. Um, but yeah, I no, I, I'm not a coffee drinker. And and. Contrary to what most people probably think, like I, I don't really drink alcohol at all. I know that's mm -hmm. like some people are like, oh, cruise directors party and drink and have fun all the time. I, I go on party and I have fun, but I'm, I'm not a big drinker. A lot of people think mm -hmm. that a lot of people say, oh, can I buy you a beer? Can I get you a drink? Can I buy you a beer? And I'm like, nah, nah we can just hang out and just, just chill and stuff. So I, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a very big drinker. If we ever go on a cruise together and you're a cruise we'll director and you ever want to buy you a drink, just say, yes, you can buy me a drink and just keep passing them to me. That'll be completely fine. <laughs> Done. No. What, what's your hard. drink of choice? What's your drink of choice? Usually on the ship, I kind of like to feel fancy and do a uh, champagne chamborg type of situation okay. there. All right. It's, All it's, right. That's quite like my fancy stuff where I like doing the uh, chipotle pineapple martinis are pretty nice. Really anything, you would love alchemy. anything from Alchemy. I love Alchemy. It's my yeah, Alchemy. Place. Alchemy is if, if I'm going to go out for a drink for the, like a nightcap or have a drink with some, some of the mm. team, that's Alchemy. You will find me at Alchemy if I'm having a drink for sure. Basil and cucumber sunrise, just all of those are just so. The, the, the strawberry cheesecake drink is the best. I know you see. Not on the menu. Not that one it's yet. on the menu. And the, the bartenders are probably going to kill me for throwing it out there, but it's the strawberry cheesecake drink at Alchemy. It's good stuff. That's, that's a good little hidden trick. I'll, I'll <laughs> ask them about that. About just don't that, tell uh, them Frankie told you about it. Don't tell them Frankie told you about it. Just say you, you heard about it. You heard about it. I will let them know. I'll let them know. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make something up with that. I'm pretty good at making up some stories now and then. Anyway, so what's your nickname and how did you get it? Because we kind of skipped over that. Yeah, so I've got a couple different nicknames. I've gone by Frankie P. My last name is Portera. Um, mm. Nobody ever remembers it. They try to, they're like, oh, Frankie Portera. They, they think they, they they think they can remember. No one can ever remember it. Um, I for a long time I went by Frank the Tank. Uh, I'm just a I'm just a stocky guy, and um, I've got I've had that nickname for a while now. There's actually a cruise director that I used to work with um, with my previous uh, company that that gave me the nickname, and it kind of stuck. So just kind of I'm just gonna go with it. I mean, people just call me Frankie, Frank the Tank, Frankie P. Just hey, you. Anything works. Anything works. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. God. So I. The, my favorite part about the ship, besides the drinking and like the drink car, that's that's probably up, it's definitely up there. Uh, I can't go with you know on a cruise ship without eating like as much food as I can. I love trying all the food from all the places that's free. Going to the steakhouse <laughs> and chef's night is nice, and you you know you're on the ship for quite a long time. What's your mm -hmm. favorite food, and do you ever get sick of kind of cycling through the same stuff, or do they kind of change it up enough where you can 
be fulfilled by it. <laughs> well, down, down in the crew areas, they have like a 30-day rotation, so you never really see the same thing for a while. Um, up in the guest areas, um, they, they tend to have the same kind of schedule. It's, it's, the Matrix is, is uh, um, on a five-day cruise, usually on the first day. It's always you know the same thing on the first day as every other cruise. But um, So you can get tired of it, but you just have to be creative up there. Um, what, for me, like I grew up, I, I, I'm actually in the Tampa area where you guys are at, which I found out recently you guys are in the Tampa area. Um, uh, and uh, so yeah, so I grew up, we, uh, my family owned a restaurant here, so food for me is always, <laughs> that's why they call me the tank, um, food for me is always like super important. And I, especially when I go out in ports, I always try, uh, try new restaurants and try new things and just try and kind of keep it fresh and keep it new instead of having the same thing all the time. Nice. I, I, my favorite part about the eating on board is probably the uh, exotic menu that they have sometimes. I, I've noticed that some ships either really go all out with it or they kind of avoid it a little bit. I, mm -hmm. I really like the exotic stuff a bit. Do you yeah. kind of go with some of that stuff or do you kind of avoid it? Like try yeah, things? I mean, there... There's not really much I don't like. I, I love I love trying food from all different countries, and that's that's a cool thing about um, about the ships as well. We have crew members from all different countries, so they try to in the crew areas they try to accommodate for all the different crew members. So um, one night we'll have uh, Indian food, one night we'll have you know Asian food. Sometimes we'll have Chinese food. Sometimes we'll have um, Latin American food. It, it's just it, there's literally just all the time down in the crew areas. There's something different from all the different countries that the people are mm -hmm. from, and and it's it's great to experience the food and all that stuff from different areas. I really wish I could go to the crew areas and try some of the food because I've talked to, like I said, a lot of crew members in the past, and they always talk really highly about the crew areas, and it just sounds so phenomenal. I, I would really like to go down there and just try the Indian food. Next time you come on a cruise, cruise, if you if you come on a cruise with me, I'll, I'll see I'll see what I can do and just get you a little tour of the crew area, and and you can you can eat and we can record it and you can put it on the show next time of you eating in the crew mess and trying the different crew foods. That would be uh, that'd be pretty fun. I would definitely enjoy that quite a lot. We'll, we'll, we'll make wants, it happen. Bird wants to know if you get sick of eating filet mignon. I don't think any, if anyone ever gets sick of eating filet mignon, the filet mignon is is awesome. I've never, I would never get sick of eating filet mignon. Never. <laughs> I don't believe you. I don't think I could really get sick of filet mignon either. It it yeah. just sounds so so nice. I almost got sick of drinking champagne on the last cruise, but uh, I made it. I definitely made it there. <laughs> so, being a crew member for so long, what tips can you give to new cruisers coming on board? Because I know there's a lot of people who have never been on a ship and they miss out on so many great opportunities. What's some advice that you can give to some of them? Yeah, to, to any any first time cruisers, even if you've cruised before, maybe once once or twice, um, my best advice I can give you is do your homework. Know what you're getting yourself into. Um, again, going on a cruise is not like just going to a resort and then having everything uh, uh, looking for things to do. Everything is planned for you. The whole entertainment and activity guides uh, are planned for you. So get involved with the activities. One, go see the show. You know, I'd be you'd be so surprised how how many times I'll be walking around the ship on the last day and, and walking through the theater, just saying hi to people. And people are walking into the theater saying, "Oh, what's what what happens in this room? We've never been in here." Mm -hmm. On the last day of a five day cruise, which means they've never gone to any of the shows. They missed mm -hmm. out on all the entertainment. Um, so see the shows, get involved with the activities, uh, for the ports of call again, check out the shore excursion team. They are the expert. We have experts in, in making sure they uh, help you what to do, uh, going in the ports. Um, again, I, I can't stress enough. Just, just do your homework, know what to do, ask questions. Again, that we have, uh, our ships have at least 1100 crew members on, on all of our ships. So again, all the crew members are there to help you guys out. If you don't know, don't feel, don't feel silly to ask, ask questions, crew members, again, are there to make sure that everyone's having a good time and getting the most out of their vacation. But just, just do your homework, get involved, have some fun, just, get, just, just have fun. I can't, I can't stress that enough. I highly, highly, highly recommend a lot of people, old and new to cruising, to get the Carnival Hub app. It's been so helpful for me. I'm usually awesome. so forgetful about it, and it has reminders and everything else, and we are not sponsored, so hashtag not sponsored by Carnival Hub app, but definitely yeah. check it out, and you can even get a I think it's like a five dollar package with it that you don't have to buy the internet where you can text other people on the app so you can talk to them without Correct. having to buy Wi-Fi or go through cellular data. And it's yeah, it's, really, it's really completely nice. free. Yeah, it doesn't cost a thing. It, it, people think it's it's just like a sales technique, but it doesn't cost a thing. You literally just connect to whatever ship that you're on for Carnival. You connect to the Wi-Fi. Um, make sure you're in airplane mode because otherwise your phone line, mm -hmm. your phone company is going to charge you through the roof. Um, make sure you're in airplane mode. Go to uh, again, uh, just turn on the Wi-Fi. 
um, connect to the whatever ship you're on, connect to their Wi-Fi. Again, you don't have to purchase a package. You can download the app before you get to the ship, or you can do it when you're on the ship. It doesn't cost you a thing, and it's literally, we have a, a list of all the activities and events called the Fun Times, and that gives you everything that's going on. Um, the cool thing about it is, is everything's just right there on your phone. Like, you don't have to do a thing. You don't have to carry that paper with you. Uh, people carry their phones to take pictures, to listen to music while they're up on the pool deck. Um, again, all you need to do is, again, just if you download the app, everything's there. And the cool thing about it is, especially on the Valor, we're, I think they're only the third or fourth ship that you can actually order the shore excursions on the app now and we deliver the tickets to your room. So we're making it easier and easier for our guests every single day. Nice, I, I absolutely yeah. love the app. So guys, definitely go check that out next time you go on a ship. We got a mm -hmm. handful of questions left. So this one comes from Bring Kimberly on Facebook. She says, do Frankie's parents still own the restaurant in Tampa? If so, what's the name? We do. We, uh, we own a restaurant. It's actually in Hudson, Florida, a little north of Tampa. Um, I just say Tampa because no one's ever heard of Port Ritchie where I, where I grew mm. up. So um, it's called Leo and Joe's. It's an Italian restaurant. It's on the corner of 52 and Little Road. Um, Leo and Joe's, we've been in business now for 40 years. Next year will be 40 years we've been in business. And uh, um, there's a reason we've been around for so long. So come check us out if you're in the area. Rob YZF on YouTube asks, can you ever get to take your family on the ship with you? Yeah, if we get um we get a friend friends and family discounts, which is great. Um, Carnival has a, a great um a program where we can bring our friends and family on the ship. Um, once you're with the with the cruise line for six months, we have uh we can nominate some people to cruise with us, and we can have them come cruise with us, which is really great. I mean, I would consider after this interview, kind of friends. So you know, just <laughs> I guess we're friends time. and family now. So, <laughs> <laughs> are you able to take them to like crew area if they are like your family members, or how strict are they with that? Uh, Carnival is phenomenal when it comes to, to having when we have friends and family crews. They want to make sure that one, we're, we're enjoying our time with our families and mm -hmm. two, that the families are kind of seeing not only of our front of house job, but again, how we live and how, how, our, how we experience life on board. Um, so yeah, so we just, uh, there's a form that we fill out with our security team. Um, we fill it out, our family or friends that are cruising with us to sign it. Um, they get a little friends and family pass, which allows them to come into the crew areas uh, with us. They can't just be be roaming around freely yeah um, they have to be with us um but yeah we can take them in the crew areas we can take them down to the mm. crew bar we can take them down to the crew uh, where the crew eat um all that kind of stuff uh, and yeah and they're able to come check out our rooms and check out all that kind of stuff and hang out for the night and stuff or whenever we have free time that's really really interesting i thought it would be a bit more stricter where they're not allowed that's that's really cool i didn't know that nice. yeah it's really neat so that's what i said if you come cruise friends and family <laughs> that that would work i would love to just kind of drink the you. crew bar yeah, we, we, we have um, every every night what they do for the for the crew downstairs um, in the mess. They have um, uh, at midnight uh, for all the crew members who have been working all night. They have food in the mess from midnight till 2 a.m. Um, and everyone calls it midnight mess instead of midnight mass. Um, so everyone goes to midnight mess. And that's, yeah, it's kind of a. Yeah. That definitely sounds like an activity we would have to do next time. Good stuff. Yeah, for sure. Final question. So what is your favorite port of call and why? And this is from Alex Kaufman. Ooh, this is a tough one. Hi, Alex, by the way. I know Alex. Um, uh, this is uh, favorite port. I've, I've got different, I've, I've, like I said, I've been cruising for uh, this August will be 15 years and I've literally been everywhere in the world I've wanted to go, I have been to so far. Um, I've done the Australia cruises. I've spent two years down in Australia. Um, Australia was a great place. Anyone down in Australia, they're so friendly down there. Um, the Alaskan ports are, are awesome, and I would say Estonia and St. Petersburg, Russia were pretty good too. It's, it's, it, there's no way I can pinpoint just one port. There's absolutely, mm -hmm. I, I got favorites for different reasons. But yeah, there, I, there, there's just, there's so many great itineraries and ports out there, so. Nice. so. I mean, it's pretty cool. You get to travel the whole entire world and all these different continents as a cruise ride. That's, that's a pretty unique type of job. Hopefully, uh, this takes off a little bit where we're able to do that in the future. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's it's good stuff. It's um, like I said, it's it's not just a job; it's a full lifestyle. And and getting to getting to travel and get to pay to uh, paid and I get paid to do what I absolutely love to do is like uh, again, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else right now. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Where can we find out a bit more information on you, like Facebook or any other pages or stuff of that nature? Yeah, I'm on. I am on Facebook. If you find me, um, it's Frankie the Tank. Uh, are you right there on the bottom? Just go cruising. Uh, if you go facebookcom slash Frankie. Um, or just just go into Facebook and search Frank Frankie the Tank Frankie the Tank. You'll find me on there as well. Um, again, I'm updating that all the time. And then I have I've got Instagram and and Twitter and all that kind of stuff too. It's all on my Facebook page, easy to find. Um, so again, if I can, I'll, I always update it, let you know where I'm going, uh, what ships mm -hmm. I'm going on. I always post pictures. Um, something I do that's really fun is uh, if you ever sail with me on uh, any of our ships. 
Um, I do what's called the sail away selfie challenge. So while we're sailing away from the port, um, I have everyone take pictures of them and their families and uh, they have some fun and they take their selfies and they post them on the page and I give out prizes. Um, so again, yeah, so if you ever cruise on any one of my ships, you get to take a part in the sail away selfie challenge. Um, that's always fun. And uh, my bad big thing too is if you see me around the ship or if you see me anywhere, um, I always do fist bump. So fist bumps like all around the ship. Um, and there's a little sound effect I do with the fist bump. I know this is, sounds really silly, but I whenever I do the welcome aboard show, I tell everyone about it. So if you see me around the ship, say hi, Frankie, and give me a fist bump. And, the, and there's a sound effect that goes with it. And that sound effect is just boop, just like that, simple and easy. And before you know it, by the end of the cruise, Every single person, I'm not even exaggerating, but every single person is going boop, boop, hey Frankie, boop, 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 out in ports on the ship. Uh, so it kind of takes off. So that's why if you go on my Facebook, you'll see hashtag boop. Um, that's what that's all about. <laughs> I even got a hash, I even got a fist bump from Mickey on the 4th of July. Mickey Mouse, I was at Disney World because I live 10 minutes from Disney World mm -hmm. uh, in Orlando. And I got a fist bump from Mickey on the 4th of July. And I posted it on my Facebook too, which is pretty fun. Sounds pretty fun. <laughs> Frankie, thank yeah. you so much for uh, taking the time to join us today, and we hope you have a lot of fun when it turns to the Valor. Awesome. Thanks, man. Great to be here. So our girl Jess has been stalking the crew hallways looking for victims. I mean, people to talk to on camera, and she wandered into the rehearsal room of a couple of very talented people who we have talked to while we were on board the Triumph before, Liz and Lucas. TV. I am Jess from the U.S. here on the Carnival Triumph, and you have met them already, but let's reintroduce them. We have the amazing Liz and Lucas. You, 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 yeah. Liz and you remember their interview when uh, you guys were here on board the Carnival Triumph, and I'm back with them because they are my absolute favorite music act here on board. Don't tell anyone else. Okay? We, did, we just finished uh, our, our yeah. gig here in the Venetia yeah. Lounge. It was nice. packed house. It was oh, packed. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, it, was nice. it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. And you only have a, a few months left here on board. So yeah, we finish to, up in September. You need to I come know. on the Triumph before get September. Get here. Come on, here. come hang out. Yeah. Now we are going to show a little bit of what they do in just a little bit, but I just want to say hello and yeah. see what's new, what's exciting in the world of music for the two of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we've learned a couple, we've learned a couple new songs, so I think <laughs> Last time we talked to you guys, we were co constantly getting certain requests. We've uh, since learned said certain requests. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's been we're a bit doing more good. time off stage trying to get through those, and then yeah. we've also been joined by uh, a couple of a couple of the show band musicians. Oh, to some jam a couple sessions. of jam sessions. Yeah. You know, it's good to get them along. You know, it kind of shakes it up a little bit for us, and we can just sit in the background. And, and you know, we had a uh, John who was on the on the. Saxophone, saxophone ripping out some solos yeah. and, and Thierry from the show band ripping out some solos on the guitar and yeah. that's yeah. always good for us because it brings that difference right. and it's know? nice to see like everyone loving what they play yeah. you know it's like I, I had a chance to witness it and like when people just jam out like it's, yeah. it's unscripted right it's yeah. just it's it is. so it's like what's so the key it's what's like the so key real. you know everyone's asking well, each other what the key is before and, the song and we're can, like okay it's this and then we're gonna do it like this and like, and cool. you, you can forget like when you're doing the same thing every day I mean not not saying like oh we don't love what we're doing but when you do it every day for months and months and months at a time you can kind of forget how fun certain things are yeah. so yeah the cool thing with jamming with people is you know they feel the same way but they get a chance to like step outside the box do some certain things and we get a chance to re listen to a song that we've been playing for a long time yeah. but people interpreting it a different way and it's just it's just a lot of fun it's just like the, the fact that everyone wants to work together is the best part it's, it's yeah amazing. it's great so do we have any new songs that have been requested constantly what is the new hot jams that people want to hear from uh, you i mean the classic one wagon wheel we wagon tried wheel? to get through today wagon wheel? Okay. yeah someone requested that and we, and we almost got there we, really we know close. we know a, a yeah. good portion of the song just because from hearing it from other bands as oh, well. Yeah. I mean, I never really listened to it a lot, but he's the guy from Hooting the Blowfish. So I was oh, like, yeah, yeah Darius Rucker. Who de knew? Definitely give him a chance. <laughs> but yeah, we, we plowed through some of that. That was that was a pretty good one. People loved that yeah. one. Yeah. You don't know yeah. what else there is, but you know, uh, yeah, we, we've been getting through some more. Oh, a picture, Kid kid Rock. Oh, we learned Cheryl that one Crow. too, in case you're bit more of a duet. interested in that one. <laughs> yeah, a bit more of a duet for us. We learned Black so. Velvet, I think that was the last oh, one we yeah, talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, Black Velvet. That, one, that one's yeah. in the repertoire now, we just do it all the time. Great, so. great. <laughs> so how different is it from performing on a ship to land? I'd say the biggest difference is when you're performing on land, you're performing in a bar, and people are there, and the, usually the bars are like, people are eating and drinking. So 
they're there, they're going out to dinner, not going out to see a band, but on the ship, dinner is in the dining room, they've got things going on in there, so when they come out, they're looking to, for entertainment, they're looking, mm. they're, so they're more involved with what you're doing, so, you know, you have a little bit more on your shoulders, but then it's cool because you get to play a little bit more with the yeah. audience, you get to talk to them more, you get to... You get to interact, so people are listening. So if you if you slide a joke in there every now and then, you say this, you say that. People like there are people out there that are hearing it and they're they're reacting to it, and that is the different different yeah. feeling for me. And the thing is here, I think it's it's disarming sometimes as well when the guests can come into the the venue or they can go somewhere and no one's playing there, and they, they yeah. realize it's just another part of the ship. And then yeah. all of a sudden, you know, it turns into this venue where we right. play there or another another like a. An activity happens, and they're like, "Okay, it's happening in our in the yeah. other room of where we're living right now." <laughs> yeah. So it's, I think it's quite enjoyable that way. Yeah. And I think I think guests are always surprised when they come in and see you because they don't expect what you guys do musically. And I think it's so unique and so exciting. And I think yeah. we need to show the viewers back there. So uh, let's get up close. And yeah, let's get up close and personal. Yoo! So here we go. So this is a farmer foot drum, 18-inch bass, got some hi hat, some snare, and a crash. And I'm normally playing the guitars. Remember to thank Jess on her Facebook page for sending us her bi-weekly videos from behind the scenes on the trial. You can find her under Jess from the US on Facebook. So my lovely and talented in the areas of packing and drinking, Shelly is uh, going to talk about one of her favorite subjects. No, not how many drinks it takes before security pays you a visit. It's about how many shoes you can smuggle on board. Shelly, just how many pairs do you actually own, and how many did you just find in your bags after your last cruise? My shoes are no concern of yours, Matt. <laughs> Listen, first of all, before we even get started, can I please say congratulations on your big win with these streaming awards. I mean, can we give Cruise Week TV a big hand here? I mean, seriously, number one, you haven't been on that long. You guys are mm -hmm. awesome. I think it's great. I mean, I know I'm part of it, but you guys, <laughs> you know, but you, I know I'm part of it, but you guys are, you know, you made it happen. You brought the the vision and I think it's great. I'm really proud of you guys. I'm so glad y'all won. So Thank I just so want much. to say it really that means first. a lot to us. And I, I can pack as many shoes as I want because there are no luggage restrictions on Carnival. So Only let's go airlines. back to the question today. How many bags do you bring for a typical five to seven day cruise? Oh, okay. Well, I have my carry on and then I usually have, do we really have to talk about this? People are going to judge me. I, I bring, I bring what I need and I bring several bags that my husband so valiantly uh, carries, you know, around for me and loads in the car and, and does what he has to do. So <laughs> You know, it takes a while to get fabulous. You need a few minutes. You need your stuff. So, but we have uh, a couple of your friends on Facebook saying about three. <laughs> My divas know how many bags I bring, but they all see them packed outside the door when it's time to go. <laughs> but this show was supposed to be aired, what? three shows ago, but of course, you know, I was having internet issues. So this is the packing show talking about all the, those questions that we see about, should I bring this or that, or what do I need? Uh, is this allowed? Is that not allowed? So I've got my notes and, um, it's pretty hefty. It's like a little tiny novel, but I'm just going to highlight on some things that I think are important that everybody should know. So, um, the first thing I want to say is, please note, 
you know, all of these are merely suggestions. Pack according to your needs. Um, Carnival does not have luggage restrictions, but the airlines do. So you can bring as many bags as you want on Carnival. I mean, you know, let's be reasonable. But on the airlines, you are going, uh, it depends on what airlines. So I would contact contact them directly to know, you know, what's, uh, I don't, I know, I only know Southwest. I only fly on with Southwest usually, and it's two bags per person up to 50 pounds. So, but I don't usually have to fly because my, I live so close to the port of Galveston. So I can just pack as many bags as I want. <laughs> as many um, as he can carry. Yeah. As many as I get my husband to load in the car. So, um, the first yeah, subject will be what, for this. Yeah, we have a cruise U-Haul. We have a bus just for the U-Haul, just for the cruise. Um, so the first thing would be the must-haves. What what do you if 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 you lost everything else, if you want to get on this cruise, this is what you need. You need to have all of your cruise documents, your receipts, your excursion documents, all that sort of thing, credit cards, your ID, your driver's license, your passport, um, your cash your insurance cards. I'm not saying you can't get on the ship if you don't have cash, but I'm just saying these are the things that, you know, you could buy more clothes, you can buy another pair of shoes, but if you lose, if you don't have these things with you, there's going to be a problem. So you must have these things bare minimum. Uh, you can buy carnival t-shirts in the gift shop if, if you lose all your clothes or forget all your, forget your suitcase or something. So, um, I also have a few things that are uh, things that I never thought to bring on a cruise before. Um, thanks to the uh, all these suggestions and the comments that we see in CCPPF all the time, um, there's things I didn't even think to bring. There's things that I didn't think to bring until after my first cruise when I thought, oh, it would have been nice to have this. So um, I've got four things that I, on my very first couple of cruises, I didn't take, and now I always take. Um, one of them's a, a little tiny door stopper. You know, the little wedge that you stick under the door? You can find it in the hardware section at Walmart. It's $2. Uh, those doors are designed to close behind you. So when you're trying to pull 14, I mean three, Mm, pieces mm. of luggage in behind you uh it's hard to get you know get the luggage in you got the door open with your butt and you're you know you're standing there you're trying to you know maneuver all this stuff so uh your your cabin steward has a little door wedge but he needs it for his job you know he has to keep the doors open for the vacuum cleaners and all those sort of things so uh you uh you don't want to be asking him to borrow his who will probably give it to you but you shouldn't take it because he has a job to do so um that's a great little thing to have in your in your bag um another thing is a lot of the ships uh the lighting system for your cabin when you walk in uh it requires you to put your sign and sale card inside there for the to keep the lights on. Um, actually, it, what it requires is anything with a magnetic strip on the back of it. So um, grab an old expired credit card or something like that, anything that has a magnetic strip, and you can keep that in your... It well, does not need a magnetic virgin, strip. It doesn't? It just it has to be... It, anything it just has we to be credit card we've used uh even the cruise like a, week tv business cards works fine that's another reason really? to hold on to okay our business cards. okay well good hey i learned something so it, it only has to be that that size mm -hmm. now i know in the safe in your room though you, it does want something that you yes. can swipe so i i mean that again the credit card is it's good for the lights and the fact that you can swipe your safe mm -hmm. with it and not something you have to carry around with you all the time. It's just to open your safe. And, uh, but uh, that's interesting. I didn't realize you could just stick a business card in there and it'll work. Anything. Anything at all. Really? Works, pretty much. As long as it's credit card or business card. You can take a chicken shape. leg down in there and it keeps the lights on. Work. If it I fits, mean, I, I don't know how <laughs> the, uh, I mean, the, I can only imagine what would happen if, you know, the cleaning crew comes in like, oh, wow, they're pretty, pretty <laughs> drunk for this. I'm not going to lie. There's one moment. There's only a taco. One. There's a taco in the light fixture. What are these? They couldn't find their card. I, mean, I get it. Soft okay, shell great. tortilla well, might work. 
Don't you know, try hey, this. after all these cruises, you always learn something new. I thought it had to have the little strip on it, mm -hmm. but uh, apparently it only has to be that size. So that's even better. But on, on most of the, some of the safes on the older ships still have the little punch in code that you can make for your uh, safe. But uh, look, most of them now are doing the little swiper thing. So I always take a, a credit card moving on from the credit card. Uh, an over the door, like a shoe organizer that would normally be for shoes is great to put in your bathroom for all of your toiletries. Keeps all the cabinet space open, uh, the shelf space. You can just put everything in your little pouches right there on the door. It, 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 it's a great little uh, a thing. You know, cabins are small, you know, they're, they, they don't want to take the whole ship up with the cabin. So, you know, they're not, there's not a whole lot of room. So anything you can do to save space is great. Um, another, the, and number four on that list of things that I always bring now. And again, you, you can message bird with your question of the, of why I can't tell you why, but you need a non surge protector uh, like a, uh, the, um, power you know, the plugs, a power strip. So, but it has to be a non surge protector type. And it's great if it has the little USB ports in it. That's what I have. It has four plugs mm -hmm. and it has two USB ports. And it's great because if you've never been on a cruise before, you might not know, but there's one plug in your cabin. Unless you have like some European adapter, or there's some weird plug in the bathroom that I don't know what fits in that, but there's one plug in the cabin and it's, yeah, it's really nice to have, to have that. So, um, do we have to, should I pause? Do we have questions? What, we have a what, couple what do we of questions want to do coming here? in. Eddie Tavares asks, Shelly, how many bobby pins do you pack? Well, I only need this one for now, Andy. This one I have right here just for you, doll. Just for you, Diva. I wore it just for you. But I have a whole little bag full of sparkly bobby pins that I wear just to annoy my Andy. <laughs> Mark Ellis asks, so. what type of luggage have you found to be the most useful for you? Um, definitely, uh, of course, the, the roller kind. Um, I bought some luggage from someone I met on the cruise group, and I bought a three-piece set. I love the little train cases that came with my set that are for all of your toiletries and such. Um, I think that over time, I've realized that the soft-sided luggage, which is what I have, it gets beat up pretty good. Um, we bought a one of the hard-sided pieces of luggage for my husband a few years ago when we went on a Halloween cruise to put our costumes in. And uh, I, I think those are better. They're just more expensive, and I haven't transferred over yet. But... Uh, my some of my soft sided luggage. I mean, it, it it's time for a new set because it's looking a little ragged after being beat up all these uh, cruises. Think pieces of plastic break and and the wheels fall off. I mean, there's only no matter how good your luggage is, there's only so much abuse it can take, right? So, Unless you go with that uh, military grade duffel bag that I got. Yeah, Throw right. everything I'm in there. My, to go. My husband's like, can I just take my rucksack? <laughs> and just, you know, fill it full of my army rucksack. So. Um, but anyway, so, uh, the next thing I have is, is a, a lot of people ask, what do I take in my carry on as opposed to what do I, what do I put in my check luggage? Well, remember that check luggage, once you leave it with the porter at the cruise terminal, it's gone until it reaches your cabin. Um, you're going to want to have all of your travel documentation with you. Uh, you're going to want to have any kind of important paperwork that you might need with you. Um, let's say your luggage got lost, God forbid, but there are some things that you should have with you at all times. Uh, moving on, your wallet, of course, your purse, your necessities, your cash, your, your credit card, line. your driver's license. Um, any prescription medication that you're, that you're on, you don't want to put it in your check luggage and then you're supposed to have an insulin shot at noon and your check luggage got delayed and it's not in your cabin until, you know, seven o'clock that night. So keep those important things with you like that, like your uh, prescription medication, uh, preferably in their original containers. Um, a change of clothes. Matt will tell you that it's nice to have a change of clothes because you don't want to show up at the steakhouse on the first night for your reservation in a tank top. 
because you it didn't was pack a very extra nice name brand tank top and i came back wearing a four-piece suit afterward and i was the best one out of the uh i'm so total proud of, of eight you. guests in Matt, there. nobody at the steak house wants to see your hairy armpits okay they want to eat their steak they don't want you with your tank top on okay that's why they turned you away that's just how i just go be. look i want my steak cooked medium rare like this it's done <laughs> <laughs> Woo, I need a drink after that one. Now and now when I drag you to the steakhouse on the uh fourth annual group cruise, <laughs> we're gonna do a little show where you're gonna have your little tank top underneath your suit. Oh, it's gonna be fun. I can't wait. Uh... <laughs> I have a whole seriously, I have a whole booklet of everything that you could possibly take on your cruise. Um I just, I printed out a packing list. One of the, when you, in, in the Facebook groups under the file section, most of the groups will have the doc section where they have all the documents. There's a packing list in there. I mean, it has everything under the sun in there that you could possibly need. And of course, not everybody's going to need all the same things, but I mean, the, the list, clothing, electronics, laundry, uh, laundry goods, if you want to do laundry while you're on there, personal things, pharmaceuticals, toiletries, um, you know, that whole packing list, what I do every cruise, I go to the docs, I copy and paste it, I print it out, I mark them off. If it's something ridiculous that I know I don't need, I, I can't even remember now why, but uh, one of the things on that list is duct tape. I'm not sure hmm. what they need duct tape for, but um, I've heard several hmm. people say the same thing about duct tape. I think it might have to do with like, if you get a blister or something like, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> if I can find some neon pink duct tape, then I, 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 so, I don't know for duct tape. That's, that's an out there one. Um, <laughs> It, it's on there. People kept insisting. It's like, no, 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 it's good. To have. Now, but okay, well, I just thought of something. Let's say your luggage did get uh, irreparably damaged somehow in the, you know, they got tossed around, something happened, something fell off. You know, you could just duct tape that handle right back on there. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's, I guess that's the best thing that you could use it for. Um, so uh, I think out of all this list, um, go to the group, go to Carnival Cruisers, Past, Present, Future, join the group, look in the file section. We have a packing list. There's tons of things in there uh, that you might not have thought of. Oh, I have one. Are, can we get real? Okay. It's a summer cruise. It's hot outside. You just went on a zip lining, uh, river tubing cave excursion in Belize. And can I say butt? I can say butt, right, Bird? I'm sure you got you can. the monkey butt, right? You got the monkey butt from the sweaty butt all day long, right? Desitin, baby rash ointment. It's great for chafed skin. And I mean, I hate to be, you know, I'm not trying to be getting in everybody's business, but we've all experienced that one time or another. And if you have that on your cruise, it will help you greatly. My husband was very happy to have that. He'd be really mad right now if he knew I was talking about this, but that, you know, it's hot, you know, skin chafes. Anyway, use your imagination. So, um, I think the most important thing to wrap up <laughs> the list, <laughs> Matt's face. <laughs> this is great. Hey, it, I, Matt, Hey, you're going to get monkey butt on group cruise four because I'm going to make sure that you get sweaty and you do everything that we can do to you. And when you're in your cabin and you're like, I don't have any desitin and you're going to call my cabin and you're going to say, Shally, did you bring some desitin? And I'm going to say, Matt, I did come and get it. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so we have a, several more segments coming up here. Shelly, it's always great to have you on. Uh, <laughs> Moving on to our future say, segments. I just want to say one or two more things and then we're out of here. I just want to mention a few of the things that are prohibited. Of course, you cannot bring your own alcohol on a cruise. You're allowed one, one bottle of wine per person per cabin and that's it. Uh, if you bring your own alcohol on... 
It may or may not be confiscated. If it's in the original bottle, they will allow you to pick it up after the cruise. If it's in some crazy little Listerine bottle that you put green food coloring in, they're going to throw it in the trash. Um, you can't have a gun. Uh, you can't have any explosives. Uh, you can't have a crossbow. I, this list, I mean, you can't have any blunt weapons, no flammable substances, uh, no stun gun devices, uh, no ammunition for your gun, of course. So you get where I'm going here. If you can't take it most places, then don't take it on the cruise because you, you won't be able to do that. So, um, but I guess that about it covers it as far as packing. Uh, you can't take anything in a bottle anymore. Uh, no bottle used to. You could lug your 12-pack of, of bottle on the cruise with you uh, because of the abuse of the smuggling of the alcohol. And everybody knows vodka looks like water. So you have a 12-pack of Ozarka water that's actually filled with vodka. Uh, because of that, you cannot take any bottles on anymore. Uh, in, anything in a can, you can still take your canned sodas, um, your monsters, anything like that, any kind of canned drink. Uh, but, and, and a bottle, a bottle of wine that's corked, but bottles of water, you can't do that anymore. This is why we can't have nice things because all of you got greedy and went in there and did that. And now they took away our bottled water, but you can order it at the fun shops for a fairly low price and they'll deliver it to your room, which really is a lot better than having to lug a case of bottled water, you know, well, my husband have to lug a, a case of bottled water on the cruise. So, but anyway, so that that's about it. As always, it's a pleasure to have you on as my co-host, Shally. I got that desk tin for you, Matt. I'll get you a fresh bottle just for you. Our photo of the week comes from the Facebook group Carnival Photos and Videos. With the groups being all about posting your latest photos, I knew this would produce some interesting pictures, and here is the one we like the best. It's Bobby Smith relaxing on a hammock on a beautiful beach. I wish I was there right now. What about you all? Keep an eye on the Facebook groups as we pick a new group each week and feature a great cruise photo from it. Carnival's first sailing to Cuba returned this Monday. The guests had a great time, and it brings new life to the otherwise quiet Tampa port. Jamie D. is the cruise director on the Paradise and was joined by senior cruise director John Harold as the venture to Cuba for the inaugural four-day sailing. It looks like Cuba will be the new hotspot for places to go this year. With Cuba not having a large port area, the larger ships can't go there, letting the smaller ships have an advantage for once. Royal, the last holdout where a single person in a cabin could buy an alcohol package without the others having to buy one, is considering changing its rules to come in line with the other cruise lines. They are testing the new policy on a few sailings and a few ships before potentially rolling it out fleet-wide. This could mean that in the future, all adults in the cabin will have to buy an alcohol package or none at all. It comes after years of abuse where people would, with the package, get drinks for many friends and others in their party. Norwegian Cruise Lines will be getting an in internet upgrade soon, which can put them on par with royal speeds. Global Eagle Entertainment announced that it would bring enhanced internet and entertainment services across Norwegian cruise ship lines, with 14 ships offering flexible tiered plans for Wi-Fi, texting, and video. The platform will be based on the firm's airtime portal, which on, is on more than 850 commercial airplanes. This will help spur up upgrades in other lines that are starting to lag behind as more and more guests take connectivity access into account when booking a cruise. Not everyone can afford just to disconnect for a week while on vacation. Some need to be connected. For example, our royal co-host, Matt Hotchberg, was on a cruise this last week but still had to spend part of his vacation time at work and was able to do this because of high internet speed on the ship he was on. We will only see this get faster and faster in the coming years. Even as we anxiously await the arrival of the Carnival Horizon, con construction began Friday on Carnival Cruise Line's unnamed third Vista-class ship. The first piece of steel was cut during a ceremony at the Fincantieri shipyard in Italy earlier today. The ship first announced back in late 2016 
It's scheduled to debut in the fall of 2019. The shipyard says the ship will be offered a wide range of onboard entertainments, restaurants, theaters, shops, and wellness centers. It will also feature a Havana area, a themed private and exclusive area, which has proven widely popular on the Carnival Vista, with cabins, outdoor bars, and an infinity pool. According to the Fincantary, the upcoming ship will weigh in approximately 133,500 gross tons and measure 1,060 feet long. The new ship will be a sister ship of the Carnival Vista that was delivered this past April, as well as a sister to the Carnival Horizon, which is currently under construction at the shipyard with delivery scheduled at the beginning of 2018. No word yet where the newest member of the Carnival fleet will be deployed or what itinerary she might sail. And that's this week's cruise news. This show and all of the wonderful abilities we have to bring in guests from LA would not be possible at the level we do without vMix. vMix is the live production software that powers our live show and many other high-end productions from church services to football games and more live productions run on vMix. What our producer Bird really liked when he was trying to improve our show was they give you a full 60-day trial of everything. That way you can test it out risk-free before you buy for two full months. Then they have systems starting from just $350. If you're going to do any sort of serious live streaming, you need vMix. Try it at vMix.com today. If you like our shows, you may want to consider joining the Cruise Week Inner Circle. You can find out more by going to cruiseweek.tv slash support, and with your support, it helps us bring you guys great videos and guests each week. It helps us raise money to bring five more new cruisers on the trip of a lifetime. So head over to cruiseweek.tv slash support to see all that is offering over there. If you want to show your support for Cruise Week TV, our merch store is also open out. You can get cups, shirts, hats, and flasks that I have personally designed. Just head on over to cruiseweek.tv slash merch, M-E-R-C-H, to check out our offerings. I also want to thank Cruise and Cat from RC Periscope Group for helping us out over there on Periscope chat room. If you want to see a lot of live streams from people on ships, head over to RC's Periscope Group on Facebook for a list. Joe and Matt Hotchberg are back next week, and Matt will be talking to Royal Caribbean after getting off his Harmony of the Sea ship. And if you know someone who will enjoy watching the show as much as you do, be nice and share the link to their Facebook wall so they can enjoy too. As always, guys, we'll see you on the ships.